We're just outside Vancouver. We're headed to see a very special net zero home. This is a trip to Bowen Island, shrouded by the smoke from a wildfire. And this is the Fully Charged Show. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. Welcome to our Net Zero house. It's great to be here. We talk about Net Zero homes a lot these days on the Fully Charged Show, but what does it really mean? Well, it's about energy use, of course, energy reduction, energy efficiency, and energy generation. This incredible property seamlessly brings some of those things together. So, Brent, tell me about how you generate uh, your power at this house. Oh, sure, yeah, we've got 24 kilowatts of solar panel production on the roof, and that's enough to generate about 19,000 kilowatt hours per year. So I'm guessing with a house that's as well insulated and as tight as this, it doesn't really change the indoor comfort much, whatever the weather. That's right, yeah. We uh, love looking out at the, at the storms and it's warm and toasty all winter long. But you've got these great big windows, which I would have if I had a view like this, of course. Uh, but you know, does that give you any loss or perhaps do you get some gains out of it? Yeah, we get a lot of gain, especially in the winter. We were away on vacation for a couple of weeks in February. The heat, heat system was entirely shut off and the house sat at 15 degrees the entire time we were away. There's zero doubt that this is a stunning example of a net zero home. Brett and Karen clearly had a vision for what they wanted to achieve. We wanted to know, how had they done it? and had it lived up to expectations. So you went to step code four That's and right. you're 40% more efficient than a house built in 2017. So what did you have to do to get to that point? So we started with a fairly standard wood frame two by six construction and upgraded. We put uh, insulated concrete forms in the foundation uh, upgraded the house wrap so there's a very good air barrier and vapor barrier and the house is extremely airtight and then as part of that uh, dropped the ceiling so that uh, all of the electrical in the ceiling for the pot lights and things like that uh, doesn't interfere doesn't penetrate the building envelope beyond that with the air tightness we uh, instead of having a like a propane stove or a gas stove uh, we went with an, an induction cooktop um, and that way we don't have to vent to the outside uh, as much. And so we can keep that warm air warm and in the house. And did you ever think about going to step code five? We thought about it. And then when we looked into it, it would have um, involved exterior insulation. And with the solar on the roof already, we were already net zero and it would have changed the look of the house a little bit. I think for someone to go to step five, really you'd need to start with a clean sheet of paper and design with that intent right out of the gate, rather than as we did, starting with a fairly traditional standard design and then uh, looking for ways to upgrade. So for those unfamiliar with the term step code and what its range of one to five really means, we sat down with Gary from BC Hydro. About seven years ago, a group came together, uh, industry and builders and government, and said, how do we get to higher performance levels? And so they set a goal, which was by 2032, all homes, new homes in BC would be built to net zero performance levels. And so they realized we can't do it overnight, so there has to be steps to it. So we have five steps in our energy step code, and this year we'll be moving to step three, which by in January, all homes will have to be built to step three, about 20% better than where we were starting. What's the advantage of a performance-based approach as opposed to a prescriptive approach? It gives a lot more flexibility to the design. The owners and the builders 
can do such things as trade off better windows for smaller walls. When you look at it holistically, you can make all sorts of adjustments as opposed to prescriptive, which says that's the way the wall's got to be. And heat pumps is a, is a thing you, you work on a lot across multiple applications, right? Yeah, heat pumps, we use it to heat water in space, cool the space too. Uh, there's clothes dryers, so they'll pay, play a big role. Here we are stood by one of my favorite technologies, the heat pump. So heat pumps are great, I know that, but how much electricity does it use? Yeah, this is about a quarter of our energy use for the year. Uh, the good thing is it's 300% efficient, so I don't feel too bad about heating the house with it. And the other thing, it allows us to have things like a hot tub and a sauna and a steam shower that also use electricity without breaking our overall energy budget. But that's great, you can have clean energy and still have nice things uh, right. too. But you don't have a battery, why is that? Well, in BC, we're lucky to have a net metering program. So when I produce 140 kilowatt hours on a sunny day in June or July, and I use 20 or 30 kilowatt hours uh, to run the house, the rest goes out to the grid. I get a credit for that. And then in the winter, when I might produce 10 or 20 kilowatt hours on a gloomy day in December, and I'm running this constantly and using 90 kilowatt hours, I get to withdraw from that credit that I've built up over the summer. That's great context, because every country we deal with, every region, in fact, uh, the grid can be very, very different indeed. Mm. At the Fully Charged Show, one of our regrets is that these technologies don't always come cheap. While we are optimistic that they will become more accessible and more affordable over time, in many countries, there are ways to get support for that initial installation. So for all the work you had done, was there any incentives to, to, to help you along? Yeah, there was a Zebex program available to us. Uh, so the, the idea was that uh, we would get, a, get rebates and in return, we filled out some questionnaires and shared our building process and building experience so that uh, as the province moves towards net zero homes that they can benefit from experiences like ours. And this is a fairly big project, so as a couple, what, what drove you to do it in the first place? You know, we hold this shared value around sustainability, and it was really important to us that we be able to create something where we were using no more than we really absolutely had to, just wanting to be good stewards of energy use, recognizing that it is a finite resource. We are very grateful for the partnership of BC Hydro just as an innovative utility in, in British Columbia that allowed us the opportunity to be able to contribute to the grid. And you know, as we're talking about the hottest August on record this year, and you know, forest fire is burning, and um, just wanting to be able to contribute and, and, and give something so that there's less pressure on the system in, in general. To, to other people, and what advice would you give them, I guess, if you were talking to someone who, who wanted, came to this house and took inspiration from it? You know, to really push your, your builder to walk alongside you in their approach to innovation, to be curious with your regulatory providers around what is possible, right? To be able to advocate for things, things to be different, to be able to just say that it, the initial investment um, is going to be worthwhile in the end. We need progressive energy companies like BC Hydro to help us decarbonize our homes. And the net zero home behind us is a superb example of what can be done. But we can't just rely on individuals like Brent and Karen Muda. We have to get much more from policymakers, from governments and others to turn the tide against fossil fuels. And I know what you're thinking. This property is unattainable, it's too expensive. But what I would say to anyone looking to decarbonize their home is there are ways that you can begin and Fully Charged is here to start you on that journey. Well, we've gotten pretty good at building single family homes like this one. 
um, and we've got a few projects, multi-unit residential buildings, but the next step is building a net zero neighborhood. And that's going to allow us to do trade-offs, like one building could shut down a little bit and another building gets what they need. And so managing those loads so that we can utilize our system better and save money for our ratepayers while providing an all-electric solution, that's where we got to go. We have all the ingredients, we just have to put it together and do it consistently. I'm confident we can get there. No man is an island, they say, but maybe your home could be. And who wouldn't want to be marooned here in this amazing net zero property? For home projects of all shapes and all sizes, subscribe to our new Everything Electric show. And for now, from the Fully Charged show, if you have been, thanks for watching. Thank you.